In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ. There's, a, there's an old story uh, that somebody told me once about a, uh, a priest that every time he went on vacation, he would hire this, he would not hire, but he would ask this, this friend of his, who was a Russian, old Russian priest, who was retired, to come and preach for him. And it seemed like every time he came to preach, it was, it was one of the two times that he preached about the, the, either the gathering swine or the curry swine, swine, at least you figure out which name it is. Every time that priest walked up, came up to the podium, looked at this. It's pigs again. <laughs> I just left. <laughs> but this this scripture must be important because it shows up in, in all the synoptic gospels, and we read it a couple times in the year. And so, hey, it's pig time again. <laughs> the scripture is very actually very educational uh, for us in the way our enemies the demons deal with this. Because they show us, the demons show us that they know that Christ is the Son of God. The demons believe and tremble, as St. James says in his epistle. It's always an interesting thing, you know, people say, you know, I believe that, I believe, I, I believe that there's a God, I believe that there is this, I believe that there is. But that's not the same as saying I believe in something. You can say, I believe that there are UFOs, but I don't believe in UFOs. You don't believe. So, you know, the demons say they believe that there is a God, that there is God, that Jesus is, is who he says he is, but they don't believe in him. They, don't, they, they oppose him. So, a person can say they believe in God, but if they don't live it, it's, it's basically practical atheism. You know, they might believe in God, but or believe that there is a God, but that's not the same as believing in God. We really put our trust in the Lord. But we can believe the demon's testimony here because they say it in enmity. And usually we can't we can't trust the demons, but at this point they said it as as they're angry. They're, they're, they're saying it in a mean way. So we know they mean it. They also show us something else very important. They cannot act without permission. It's one of the most important things we, we, we should know about the demons. Their power is extremely limited. They have to ask for permission to even go into the swine, into that herd of swine. You know, there's, a, there's an old saying, I'm sure you've all heard it, it's it a much more popular one. Flip Wilson, the devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. People always say, the devil made me do it. But guess what, that's not true. The devil cannot make anyone do anything unless he's been given permission first. Possession, as it were, possession begins with permission. The devil only has the power that we give him. We give him too much power because the devil is powerless in reality. The gospel shows that the demons desire nothing more than our destruction, but they're hindered by God. They destroy the pigs, which are not made of the image of them, but they cannot destroy a person. You know, it's funny, when we think about it, you know, People like to elevate, oh, he's an exorcist, so and so is an exorcist. They make this big thing about the people who are exorcists. You know, exorcist one of the, was used to be one of the minor orders in the church. It's like, it was, I think it was one step above doorkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that actually was one of the orders of the church. Like, I'm a country doorkeeper. <laughs> okay, doorkeeper John. <laughs> They have Facebook today and be like, you get people write, I'm doorkeeper drunk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, it was on a par with an acolyte, basically, a paper bearer. Now, the thing is, the, the power to resist demons comes from God Himself, to all of us. We do not have to fear the demons because we are united to the King of the universe. This is part of the joy of being under authority. We discussed that uh, last week with the centurion because he was under the authority of the emperor. He also exercised authority. In the same way, we're under the authority of God and we have authority over those beneath us. In other words, the demons do not have authority over us. They do not have power over us. Remember though, what, the, what the Lord said to, his, to the apostles after he had said them 
out and the first time and then he brought them back in. He said, don't be so glad that you have authority over the demon. Be glad that your names are in the book of life. <clears throat> in other words, don't be glad you have of authority over those who are lower than you. Be glad that you are under the authority of one who loves you enough to share his life with you, the God and creator of the universe. As I said, the only power that the demons of the devil has is that which we give him. We can make ourselves his slaves if we put ourselves under his authority. Now how does he do this? How does he get us to do this? He's wild. He uses trickery and cunning and senseless thoughts and temptations. Well, the good thing is the devils cannot and demons cannot read our minds. But they've observed human behavior so long that if they're true judges of character, they can see where our weaknesses lie. And they'll make suggestions based on that. They don't listen to them. They go off their page for a little bit. There's, there's like, you know, we talk, we like to talk about the passions. And people, oh, they've got the passion of money. Passion of anger, passion of love, passion, passion of blood, and all these things that we talk about, we have to fight the passion. How does something become a passion? How does something go from that level? It starts with the thoughts. And you know, you hear people come to confession, oh, I thought the most awful thing. Said, Did you accept the thought? I said, well, no, that's not a sin. This is important, this is important. There's five stages, it starts with the thought. We're in spiritual battle here. The thought are the bullets that the devil shoots at us. So the first thought, there's no sin in being attacked. Or in battle, you expect to be attacked. Right? So the thoughts come in. It's good to confess those because that takes away their powers. But the thought itself is not sin. But then there's a second level, and you get into a little dangerous ground. You start to engage in hand to hand combat. You're getting in there, and you start dialoguing with the thought. Say, I'll well, use a safe, a safe sin so nobody's going to kill Bank robbery. I hope there's no bank robbery. <laughs> it's walking along the street, you see a bank. Boy, it'd be cool to live in the thought. <laughs> it'd be cool to rob a bank. No, no, it wouldn't. That would be bad. Okay? Yes. Not going to do it. <laughs> but then, as you walk, you know, but you know, if I rob the bank, I can pay off the bill. If I put a good mask on, no one knows who, who I was. I could get away with it. And, uh, you know, I know the plans. I know. I can do it. I think I can do it. No, no, I'll never do that. But you're, you see, you're starting to dialogue. But then you haven't actually given in to the sin yet. But you're getting close. You're getting, it's a dangerous thing. Usually it's best just, just to ignore it. Let it go. Then the third stage is consent. That's when the sin begins. You go, yep, I think Robin Banks is just great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it. Next time, I'm going to do it. Now, you might never actually get around to doing it, but you've given consent. You've given assent. Robin Banks is a great thing. <laughs> so, that's, your, that's a sin. But then, what if you actually commit the bank robbery and you get away with it? It's very rare these days. But you get away with it. Then you've really committed the sin. But they think, that was good. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> so you just keep robbing banks, keep robbing banks, one after the other. And so you can't even walk by an ATM with your hand up, your hands start to shake. <laughs> <laughs> That's called a passion. <laughs> or in modern words, we'd say addiction. Because a lot of people don't understand. The word passion has its roots in the word, uh, it was a, the, in English, it's from the Latin word from passion. But in the Greek, it makes it much more, uh, it's much more evident what the word really means when we talk about passion. So the passion of Christ, I should give a clue. Pathos is the Greek word that they talk about. So what does that mean? It means what is it, pathology, or it's a psychopath, or pathological. It means suffering. Passion is suffering. Well, people, you know, people say, oh, he's passionately in love. He's too bad. <laughs> he's suffering. He's terrible. Oh, my God, he's passionately in love. Um, so, the thing is, when it becomes an addiction, then the devil has you. Then you actually are a slave to the devil. You have given yourself, you've given the devil complete control over you in that way. And then, by the time it becomes a passion, then it becomes 
uh, it, it needs supernatural intervention. That's where confession and, and, and repentance come in. So it's the thought, which is not a sin. <clears throat> There's the conversation, which you get on, on a shaky ground. Then there is consent. And then there is the actual commission of the sin, and then there's habituation. So those are the five stages. There. And that's how the devil does it. He starts out with that thought. And that power of suggestion, which is powerful sometimes, that's his only, his only thing to do. What, what happened in the Garden of Eden? The power of suggestion. Look at that fruit. It's pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, you won't, you won't die. You won't die, no. It's fruit. Fruit's healthy. Eat fruit. <laughs> yeah, right. And then she would add, hey, look, I had this fruit. It's really good. Oh, no, Power of suggestion. I don't want to, I'm probably uh, dating myself by saying that there's a movie called Time Man. It's many years ago. Um, and and in, that, in that movie, uh, they had this, this evil creature who was like, he was the embodiment of Satan, so to speak, was, he was pure, concentrated evil. <laughs> and he burned down this house, he got stuck in the toaster oven. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch this movie, it's a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end, little, little, the, the bar, house is burned down, the, the fire department has come out there, including chaplains, I'm sure. And uh, this little boy looks at his pants and says, Mom, Dad! It's a British movie. Mom, Dad, don't touch it. It's evil. And what do they do? They touch it. They go, mm, boom, and they blow up. It's, it's a mighty fight on that movie. <laughs> 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 they go exactly right. <laughs> you know, I make, I make jests about the powerlessness of the demons, and perhaps I overstate that because they are coming. Well, we should be aware that we, through Christ, have the power to defeat them, that we should not fear them. We should be wary. We should be careful. Partly because we let our guards down. We get lazy. And the thing is, the demons never sleep. They never get lazy. Even though laziness is one of those deadly sins. They are sloth. You know, it's like they, they are not slothful themselves. They use our thoughts against us. Intrusive thoughts. Um, you know, everybody has these abusive thoughts. It's a really good book called Info of the Mind. It's a psychology book, actually. Uh, I read it one time and I was like, this sounds really familiar. And I'm reading this book, it's like it's almost like reading the Church Father. And it's like, but in modern psychological language. I think. This guy's really close to something, but he says, we don't know where these thoughts come, but everybody has them and they feel like they come from outside, but we don't know where they come. I said, that's where you missed it. <laughs> you know exactly where they come from. But we should remember what St. Paisius, the Athenite, said about these thoughts. He likened them to airplanes. He said, thoughts are like airplanes flying in the air. If you ignore them, there's no problem. If you pay attention to them, you create an airport inside your head and permit them to land. I think the Lord also said, where your desire is, there your heart is. So we keep guard over what we desire. We strive to desire only that which is pure and God-pleasing. The passions, self-indulgence, comfort, comfort, all these things, these are desires that the devil use against us. And we're always telling people to fast in the church. And we, we, don't, we don't fast to please the Lord. We fast because we love the Lord. But he doesn't need our fasting or our ascetic efforts. You know, God's like, why are I wish they were fasting? He's not really giving me a boost. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. So he says, I wish they would fast more so they could overcome, learn how to overcome their passion more. But they learn to overcome their temptations. We do these things so we're not attached to material goods and we're not dragged down by them. We fast in order to focus on the Lord and to make Him the desire of our hearts. The devil uses trials and temptations also to get to this. It's important how we react to the trials and temptations that are common to all created beings. You know, it's, we also like to say, why me? It's better to say, sort of, why me, why not me? Because everybody has 
Everybody has conflictions. My aunt once told me, hey, we all got to die of something. She told me that when she was actually dying of skin cancer. She had no head to tell. She had a, she had a peaceful outlook on it, a good sense of humor. We don't always ask, we don't always know why something happens. There's often many different reasons why, and uh, we, can, we can drive ourselves crazy trying to figure out why something happened. Um, St. Paisius also used to say there's different ways to figure out why. He said sometimes we're given trials and temptations so we can be an example for others. Sometimes it's because of sins that we've committed in the past. Sometimes it's because somebody else has done something to it. It's like, you know, there's all sorts of things. He said, but you can go crazy trying to figure out why. Always use any kind of trial and temptation as a means of repentance. And you're going you're gonna to get, you know, you'll get it. You'll do it right. And the, the, thing, the way to think is not why, but how. How do I get through this? How will we get through something? It's with the grace of God we can get through anything. An example of course, the, is the, what the martyrs show us. So I love the story of the martyr who was being put on a grill for a long time. So the barbecue, giant barbecue, the Romans were in, they had notoriously insidious tortures. They had this, I can't remember the saint's name, I wish I could. Lawrence. Lawrence, I mean, yeah, they had them on the grill. And they're about to flip them over and no, no, I'm not done on the side yet. <laughs> <laughs> God takes care of you. You can get some really bad jokes in the middle of this stuff. So what, what a glorious thing. But the Lord said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. And those are the words he gave to St. Paul when Paul asked to be delivered from the malady. He said, no. I've given you so much, you need to be reminded a little bit to rely on me. Don't start relying on your own, your own skill. The demons <clears throat> try to deceive us, too, also by appearing as an angel of light. The Fathers teach us to treat every apparition, even if, if it seems to be the one himself, as if it's a trick of the demons, because it's oftentimes it is. Um, to pass ghosts. <laughs> okay. I can do that again. <laughs> God will not be offended if we turn our back on the apparition across ourselves. If it's a real vision, because he can make himself known. He can say, no, 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 that's okay. It's real. Because <laughs> we're told in Scripture to test every spirit. <clears throat> And that test is oftentimes crossing yourselves and turning your back against the, the, the vision. The dem demons cannot stand the sign of the cross. There's lots of stories in the monastic literature. The desert, desert father's talking about uh, a, a, a young monk will be visited by a demon in the guise of an angel. When they cross themselves, suddenly they smell this terrible sulfur kind of smell, and they see a little little imp there. But it once looked like this great angelic being, suddenly it's this little imp, he goes, eh, got you, yeah. <laughs> go away now, you can't scare me. And it's funny, finally in their frustration, uh, especially in places like Manapos, where the people are used to dealing with these apparitions and stuff, and they don't work as well, uh, the demons just resort to making loud noises and making kind of stuff, like little children having a tantrum, or yelling boo at someone to scare them. Because all the other stuff hasn't been working. Well, did you try being an archangel? I did. I really was really good. I had some. Good. <laughs> well, did you try looking like the Lord? I did. I had that great. Oh, I gave you blue eyes and long hair. But some of them expect that. <laughs> but it didn't work. <laughs> well, just yell at <laughs> Get it out of your system. <laughs> Do not be afraid, but be careful. We're not to let our guard down, but be vigilant and hope in the power of God to preserve us. Because we don't have to rely on our own strength. We have to only rely on the strength of the Lord. That's the only rely on the strength of the Lord. There's nothing greater than the strength of the Lord. We get to rely on the strength of the Lord. get to rely on the strength of the Lord. He's our strength. And right before we say the creed, the priest 
says this prayer three times. He says, I will love thee, O Lord, my might. I love thee, O Lord, my might. The Lord is my foundation, my refuge, and my deliverer. The demons may believe and tremble, but we are given to believe and stand firm on the solid foundation of the Lord. Fear not, little flock, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's my favorite scripture. Of this. What I'm saying to you is, I pray to sit here and be saying all the time. <laughs> <laughs> fear not, little flock, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Why do we fear the demon? Why do we fear the fact that we fall? We can get back up. We need to get back up again when we fall. We don't need to fear when the God wants to forgive us. Because we know that God wants to forgive us. We know God wants us to succeed in our spiritual life. Because Christ himself said, Fear not, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ.